What is up all my beautiful people of the whole entire internet? Today I'm talking and ranking all the new MCU films. We got 19 films now to be ranking with Avengers Infinity War finally coming out. I've finally seen it and what's the best way to celebrate it is by ranking all the movies. But make sure guys to comment down about, about your list and what ranking you guys have for these films. Of course, let's get straight into it. I mean, number 19 is going to be Thor The Dark World. Yeah, this is my least favorite now and I still don't even think this is a bad film. Actually, none of these films are really bad there's just generally either mediocre or just okay but Thor the Dark World it has some decent action sequences you get some more Thor and Loki banter which is always fun Alan Taylor does a good job directing at least the action sequences and there is some good stakes to this film that do set up some things down the road Hemdall has some great moments overall the villains really meh Malik is probably the worst villain we've ever had in the MCU and overall Thor the Dark World it's a fun time it's just not something that you really do remember Coming it down at number 18 is going to be The Incredible Hulk. This is the film that I put down here because it's not one of those films I ever really want to revisit. Sometimes it feels like a chore to revisit. It does have one of the coolest action sequences between Abomination and Hulk, but for me, it doesn't feel like it belongs into the MCU. It feels like it's kind of shooed into there, besides having General Ross really show up in Civil War and also having Tony Stark's end credit cameo scene. Besides that, it really just doesn't feel like it should belong in the MCU. And coming in at number 17 is going to be Iron Man 2. Still a fun film at best. I like this film. It introduces Black Widow S. And Black Widow, Scarlett Johansson, has some great action sequences in here, especially since against some of the guards. Whiplash is a cool villain. I like the design and look of him and what Mickey Rourke did with him. He didn't get enough dialogue. I'll even say Sam Rockwell was pretty damn good in the role as well. I liked his character and what he did. And of course, I mean, if you have Robert Downey Jr. in the role, you're going to have a good lot of good fun times with him. And really, I Iron Man 2 is just one of those setup films for the whole entire universe. It has some fun moments to it, but it really boggled down by the whole setting up everything else. Coming in at number 16 is going to be Thor, the first one. A father-son tale with some brotherly stuff in there. Anthony Hopkins' as Odin is a perfect choice. Of course, Thor really loses all of his powers in here and he has to gain responsibility and whatnot. Really, his relationship on Earth, I think that's really the movie like kind of falls apart for me. I don't like this Earth sequences. It's funny, it has some cool humor to it, but his relationship with Natalie Portman never worked. It never worked in Thor The Dark World, and that's why I was glad they got rid of it in Thor Ragnarok. And overall, Chris Hemsworth's portrayal as Thor was great to see him in here it's weird to see how serious he's got and how serious he was and now he's funny and really it just i like this film i like the father's son shakespearean kind of tale that kenneth brana portrayed into the film and let me tell you the cgi for this film is like stunning like i even contend that the cgi in this film is better than the ones in ragnarok i mean number 15 is gonna be captain america the first avenger this film was so different the fact that it took place in world war ii and just moved into that aspect got a lot of great things with peggy carter bucky barnes himself and there's just a lot of good character dynamics in there but Steve Rogers himself this is where his character arc stale moves ahead and we see where it started at and that's something great because for me I think Steve Rogers probably has the best character arc and also the best movies in the whole cinematic universe and I just love to see where his character started out and plus I gotta give props to Red Skull. Red Skull is a good villain portrayed by Hugo Weaving. And number 14 is gonna be Iron Man 3. I enjoy Iron Man 3. I get it. People hate it. I get people hate the Mandarin twist. It doesn't bother me at all. It's a Shane Black film, pretty much. A lot of this stuff is retconned in the MCU, from what I feel. But Iron Man 3 is a fun film at best. It is a... It actually, I didn't even contend. It's a good film at best. It has a lot of good moments to it. The villain's eh. Guy Pierce does what he can with the role, and he has some cool moments. The Mandarin twist kind of rubbed me wrong, because I think Ben Kingsley would have been a fantastic Mandarin. Just to, that he's playing Trevor... It, didn't bother me the most, but I also am not the biggest Mandarin fan from the comics, so I wasn't totally looking forward to it. I still think this is a really good film, and I think it's a fun film at that. I get people's gripes with it, but I think Iron Man 3 is fun. I mean, number 13 is going to be Avengers 2 Age of Ultron. Woo! When I first saw this film, I actually thought it was better than the original, and then I saw it again, and I was like, okay, that Thor hot tub scene, I, I could give or take with that. There's a lot of scenes in here where I think you could give or take with it. Ultron's a pretty good villain. I think he jokes around too much, but I do think James Vader was a perfect choice for Ultron. Introducing Vision, Quicksilver, and Scarlet, which was cool, even though Quicksilver eh, bedded out really fast, and just because you didn't see that coming, did you? I can't do the voice. But Scarlet Witch is a great addition scene where her character is now from here to Avengers Infinity War. Same with Vision. And just overall, I think this film is just a nice touch to this franchise. It got us another crossover. Some good fast pace. I feel like this film at times is actually more fast pace. It puts some nice things in there for Civil War to start up. And overall, Age of Ultron, it's a good time. At number 12 is going to be probably the smallest of all the Marvel films. And that is Ant-Man. No pun intended. 
Um, this film is very underrated, I think. I, I, I'm a sucker for heist films, so knowing that Ant-Man's a, a heist film is a ton of fun. You get the heist elements in there. The Ant-Man suit is a ton of fun. The training montages with him and Michael Douglas is great. I love that whole dynamics, and I cannot wait to see what they do with the Wasp character, because she was great in here, not even though she wasn't in the suit yet. And I just think, like, Scott Lang and Hank Pym's dynamics just works totally well. I think the humor in here is great, and just some of the action sequences in here, especially that Thomas the Train Kenjin one, is just such a blast. And number 11 is a film that always switches up and down my list for me, and that is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. A lot of this might be because I love Baby Groot and think Baby Groot is one of the cutest characters I've ever made on television or movies or any kind of geek stuff. But also, besides that, I really just like the father-son tale that they tell within this film. I think it's a lot of fun and a lot of kind of personal references there, where I think if you have father issues, I don't particularly. My dad's awesome. But I think if you do have father issues, that will kind of add a little depth and issues to you. I think Rocket Raccoon, every character really gets a more dynamic to do here. If I had any really big cons with this film as the Sovereign, I, I just didn't like their characters. And Drax the Destroyer, I wish he destroyed more stuff. Mantis was a night edition. Gamora has some great de development with her sister Nebula. And of course, Groot and Rocket are just great. The soundtrack's great. And I think James Gunn did a pretty good job here. I wish the team was just more together. Alright guys, coming down at number 10, we're getting to our top 10 right now and that is Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, it's kind of falling down for me a bit. I still enjoy Thor Ragnarok, I actually think this is the most entertaining out of all the films in the MCU. It's very rewatchable, very funny, but the implications that happen in this film, I feel like they're just not, like, for me, it just doesn't make a lot of sense, and it's hard to explain for some reason, but it is a lot of fun. I love Korg, I love Meek, I enjoy Hela for what she is. I thought Kate Blanchett got, did the best she could with what she had. Uh, Thor's great, Loki's great, Valkyrie is my huge standout. Please make a Valkyrie solo film. Thor Ragnarok's a blast to watch, but sometimes I feel like it's just, it's weird. It doesn't fill, fall in with some other of the MCU films. Coming in next, guys, is number nine, and that is Doctor Strange. Every time I watch this film, I find myself liking it more and more. The mysticism, the magicalness that they bring into the MCU and push into here and open up a new corner pocket into this MCU universe is great. Scott Derrickson really directed the hell out of this film. Tilda Swinton as the Ancient One is great. She is such a good addition to this universe. And, I mean, just Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange as well is the perfect Doctor Strange I could have ever wanted. He is perfect as the role. Wong's a great addition. Baron Mordo is great as well as Chutel Ejiofor. And just really overall, it's just a really fun film. A great color palette in there. Dormammu's a pretty cool villain. Great ending fight sequence. Different than something we've ever seen in the MCU before. And overall, Cassilius as Mads Mikkelsen's playing is... He's pretty decent too. I think he could have used a little bit more background history. But overall... Fun film, lots of good stuff in there. Sometimes the humor falls off, but I love Doctor Strange. Coming at number eight is going to be Iron Man. This is the film that kicked off the MCU. There's nothing more I can really say about this film, but it's awesome. It's kick-ass, it works, and it's such a blast. This film still holds up today. It's still one of the best films in the MCU, and it probably always will be. It kicked off what started it. Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man is the perfect casting choice. John Favreau was a great director to kick off the cinematic universe. And the end credit scene, come on. Nick Fury showing up to start the Avengers Initiative. And number seven is going to be Black Panther. So I've seen this film probably like 10 times now, and I love Black Panther. This film is fantastic top to bottom. It's one of the best films in the MCU. The mythology and world building into Wakanda is some of the best in there. It's a game changer for Hollywood in general, too. Having a full black cast pretty much in here is great. I love everyone. It has such a role to stand out. But really, the main standouts out here, besides Chadwick Boseman and Michael B. Jordan, are really the females in here. Okoya, Nala, and Shuri are fan fantastic they are the best elements of black panther and i love them to death and really the whole world building with wakanda in here is great coming at number six is the avengers this film's a pure almost masterpiece of a comic book film one of the best comic book films ever made one of it the fact being joss whedon directed it and really gives every single character a standout shot in here and it, it's just great mark ruffalo comes in as the hulk redoing it all over edward norton and he's great he's really the main standout for me mark ruffalo was the one that stole the first avengers film when he goes hulk smash punches the leviathan boom just takes it down great some great moments in here alan Silvestri as the score in here is top-notch awesomeness 
And I, I mean, the Avengers is just so much fun. Really, every act in this film gets better and better. And that's why the Avengers is one of the best films in the MCU. Coming at number five is going to be Spider-Man Homecoming. Spider-Man is one of my favorite heroes of all time. And I love Spider-Man Homecoming. It, it, Tom Holland is my is the perfect Spider-Man for me. I love the villain of the Vulture in here. Even though I'm not the biggest comic book counterpart loving of him. But I think Michael Keaton gave a fantastic performance as the Vulture. I think having Tony in here also being here as a side character was great. His friends in here are fantastic. It's just you can really see yourself as Peter Parker, and that's one of my favorite things about Spider-Man himself. Spider-Man Homecoming works on so many different levels, and on a lot of levels, it does work. It feels like a John Hughes film, and I think if I had any complaint with it, I just wanted some more web-slinging action in here, but... I mean, come on. It, it, this is the Spider-Man that we've known and loved that we wanted to see a Spider-Man in high school. I mean, at number four is going to be Civil War, Captain America Civil War. This film is fantastic. It still carries some of the best action sequences throughout the MCU. The last fight scene is super emotional in here. You know, you really do feel the sides bickering. You, The best thing about this film is that even though you go into the film with one side, maybe you're on Cap side or Iron Man side, there always is that divergence of that. Maybe you'll diverge to the other side because they each make good counterpart arguments this is a great introduction to black panther and spider-man in general and civil war still holds up today i think zemo is a very underrated villain in the mcu and i love just putting on this film and catching it on and re-watching it because civil war is an absolute blast coming in number three is Avengers Infinity War so this is still in my top three i love Avengers Infinity War i've sat on it for a while now and after seeing it again it still is an amazing film. This film is brilliant. It is an epic. It is the Empire Strikes Back of the MCU. And this is easily one of the best superhero films. Yes, it does feel like a part one because we all know a part two is coming. But still, even at times, it doesn't even feel like the part one. I think some people will have that issue where they do feel like it's part one, but I don't. It. I was very satisfied by the ending of this film. Very satisfied with how the ending happens. And I mean, the ending is jaw-dropping awesome it is one of the best endings to a film in general i think the russo brothers really outdid themselves with here i like the whole story really a lot of great character dynamics great character banter some uh, literally I'm, I'm not getting the spoilers but the action in here is like oh my god amazing and it really is just a good segue into avengers 4 and I, I have to say, like, this is easily one of the best Avengers films. This is easily go up into number one with more rewatches. And I, I, I didn't expect it. It was actually at, after I saw it a second time, it was actually lower on my list. But once I saw it a second time, I found myself loving it even more. And just, I cannot get this film out of my head. I love Avengers Infinity War. Moving on to number two is probably the best film in, in this whole universe. And probably one of the best superhero films ever made. And that is Captain America the Winter Soldier. For a while now, every time I do these rankings, this, video, this movie has actually fallen not in my top five sometimes. Sometimes it drops out, and I don't know why. I finally rewatched it again. I love this film. Holy crap. I think the best action sequences are in here. The elevator sequence, the first sequence of the Winter Soldier, the Nick Fury's sequences. This is just a great spy film in general, too. Chris Evans kicks ass in here as Captain America. And this is the film that really took me out of the role of Captain America as a Boy Scout and Captain America and taking him serious. He is so good in here. And if, like for me, if people just, oh, Chris Evans is okay if Captain America used to obviously have never seen The Winter Soldier. The Winter Soldier is top notch, great directing, especially from two newcomers at the time, which was Anthony and Joe Russo. They knocked it out of the park with winter soldier and i mean this carries some of the best villains in here the best twists and turns and just everything in this film is perfect now we get to my number one film in the mcu and it is still guardians of the galaxy growing up this is one of the few heroes i did know of i knew the original team is growing up i still kept them tacked with groot and rocket as they get joined in star lord and gamora when they rebooted the team and even throwing in drax in there i love the guardians of the galaxy the film was everything i wanted and more it's one of the most rewatchable films i've ever seen it's one of my favorite films of all time actually i think james gunn directed the hell out of this film wrote the film so superbly one of the best scripts ever put to screen and i just think the guardians of the galaxy is one of those most unique lightning in a bottle movies that i don't think they'll ever be able to duplicate i don't ever think any other guardians film will ever surpass the first one you got great character development between all five of our new heroes you got a pretty decent villain in ronin i think he's really the only weakest part of this film great humor a fantastic soundtrack that makes this film all come together and just flow perfectly and guardians of the galaxy is 
it's Guardians of the Galaxy. It's awesome. Right, guys, that is my ranking list for this new MCU iteration after throwing Avengers Infinity War in here. This was a great journey to Infinity War. I cannot wait to see. I can't believe I have to wait a whole year for the next Avengers. It's going to kill me, especially after Avengers Infinity War. But guys, if you guys are wondering when I'm going to be putting up my spoiler talk, that will be going up tomorrow. I'll be live streaming with a bunch of other YouTubers. So that'll be a ton of fun, guys. It was a great idea, great plan. I can't wait to bring you guys that. So make sure to come join us around 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's going to be a blast. But seriously, guys, I wouldn't be here without you guys. So make sure to comment down below and tell me what your guys' list is. If you're new here, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you guys never miss any videos. I love putting out early reviews and talking with you guys just about movies and geek culture. But if you guys want to talk more geek culture, make sure to hit up all my social media links and also go check out Sandwich John Films down below where you guys can win advanced movie screens, movie news, and movie reviews. I love all you guys. You guys are the best. I hope you guys enjoyed Avengers Infinity War. I hope you guys are liking all these videos. I can't wait to hear your guys' thoughts. So until next time, stay classy.